Hey, what's up everybody? Too Tall Toby here, and in today's SolidWorks sheet metal quick tip, we're gonna talk about the miter flange command. So when you look at geometry like this part here, you might think that the way you create this geometry would be by creating an edge flange here, and an edge flange here, and an edge flange here, and then going in with a cut extrude and cleaning up these corners with like a 45 degree cut here to kind of clean out those corners. But there's a much easier way to accomplish this, and that's by using the miter flange command in SolidWorks Sheet Metal. Because with the miter flange command, what you do is you create a sketch here down at the end point of this edge, and then you just kind of rip that sketch along these edges, almost like a sweep. And what SolidWorks will do is it'll automatically trim out these corners here of the miter flange. And what's nice is that that all exists in one single feature, and you can flatten that feature here using the Sheet Metal Flatten tool. However, if you've got a keen eye, you might notice that the corners here look a little bit off. They should really probably have 90 degree notches in them for the corners of that miter flange. Well, at the end of the video, we'll talk about why this happens and what you can do to resolve that. But if that all sounds good to you and you feel like you're in the right place, be sure to hit the like button on this video. Leave me some comments down below for anything that you learn or any additional questions you have. And let's get into it here by starting a brand new model in SolidWorks. So I'm gonna close this model. I'm gonna choose to create create a new model. We're going to make this in millimeters. And this way, if you want to follow along, you absolutely can. I'm going to go to the front plane and I'm going to begin a new sketch. And I'm going to start out by creating a rectangle. I'll use the corner rectangle option, create a rectangle here. And then I'm going to go to my smart dimension command and give this rectangle a height of 60, a width of 175. And then I'm going to hit escape and I'm going to take this lower line. And I'm going to hold control and pick the origin and make that midpoint. Finally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click in the background, then I'm going to click on this lower line here, and I'm going to make that for construction. So if you're following along with, you want to pause the video, this is what your first sketch should look like. Now, once you've got this first sketch in place, you're going to go up here to your command manager, your toolbar up here. You're going to right mouse button and say tabs sheet metal. You're going to make sure that your sheet metal tools are enabled. And then you're going to go in here to your sheet metal tools. You're going to say sheet metal, and you're going to use this very first option, base flange slash tab. This is going to take your 2D sketch and it's going to turn it into a sheet metal flange. So you're, you're basically doing a thin feature extrusion, but you're extruding it as sheet metal. So we're going to bring this out to 100 millimeters for our depth. This first field here, depth is going to be 100 millimeters. And then we're going to go down here to our sheet metal parameters and we're going to make our wall thickness three. I'm going to use the tab key here and our default inside bend radius is going to be five. So you'll notice that down here, we've got our wall thickness of three, our default inside bend radius is five. And we're gonna use this option here, reverse direction. And if you click in the background and you press control one, that'll show you this thing in a front view. And when you say reverse direction, what you're doing is you're specifying whether the sheet metal material should be on the inside or the outside of your 2D sketch. Well, we want our material to be on the inside of that 2D sketch. And once you've got that in place, you can hit the green check mark and that will finish your first sheet metal feature. Nice job, everybody. And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new sketch perpendicular to this edge on a new plane down here. So you imagine if we were gonna create a new sketch perpendicular to this edge, we would need a plane down here. We'd need to create a new plane. Now, of course, we could sketch that on this lower face of the model, but let's say we wanted to create a new plane here perpendicular to that edge. That's approximately what that plane would look like. Well, here's kind of a cool shortcut in SolidWorks. Now I'm gonna do this two ways. First of all, I'm gonna go into my options and in my options, I'm gonna to go to sketch auto rotate view normal two so options system options sketch auto rotate view normal two is turned on and then in a moment i'm going to turn that off so i'm going to say okay and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to pick on this edge right here you'll notice i'm not in any commands you'll notice i don't have a new plane over here i'm going to pick on this edge right here if you imagine this edge cut in half so here's the midline. I'm gonna pick on this edge down here on the lower half of that edge. And then once I pick on that edge, I'm gonna choose the command sketch, sketch. So from the sketch category, I'm gonna pick to new 2D sketch. And what SolidWorks automatically does is it creates a new sketch plane perpendicular to that edge and it puts me into sketch mode on that new sketch plane. Now I know the sketch plane didn't show up in the tree yet over here, but it will. 
Don't worry, it will. As soon as we're done working in that sketch, it'll show up over here in the tree. So this is kind of a cool shortcut. You can pick an edge, and what SolidWorks will do is it'll put you into sketch mode, and it'll create a new plane normal to that edge at the end point. Now, you'll notice that SolidWorks also rotated the view when we did that. That's because of that option that we had enabled, and that option is turned on by default, but I find it a little disorienting. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna choose to exit this sketch. So I'll choose exit sketch here, or I'll just choose the little pencil up here in the corner, exit the sketch. You see the new plane was created, plane one. I'm gonna delete that plane. So click on that plane, press delete on my keyboard, enter. And then I'm gonna go up to my options here. And in my options, I'm gonna say options, system options, sketch, auto rotate view normal to, I'm just gonna turn that off. So auto rotate view normal to is turned off now in my sketch settings. So system options, sketch, Auto rotate view is now turned off. I'm gonna say okay. And now I'm gonna choose this edge again. And I'm gonna go up here to my sketching tools and choose to create a new 2D sketch. And look at that, a new plane is created. Now you'll notice the plane doesn't show up unless you take your mouse out here on the screen and kind of put your mouse over it. But a new plane is created perpendicular to that curve at the end point or perpendicular to that edge at the end point. And then if I exit that sketch and I do the same thing here, this time, again, imagine this line is cut in half. Now this time I'm gonna choose the upper half of that line. So I'm gonna choose here and then I'm gonna choose sketch, 2D sketch. Now look at that, a new sketch plane is created perpendicular to the curve, but closer to the other end or normal to, or um, coincident to the end point closest to where I selected that edge. So. That's kind of a cool tool that you can use in SolidWorks. You can use it all throughout SolidWorks, not just in sheet metal, but anytime you want to quickly create a new plane perpendicular to a curve or an edge at an endpoint, you can choose uh, just to pick on that curve, and then you can choose the new 2D sketch command, and a new plane will be created automatically. Here you can see those planes showing up here in the tree. So I'm going to delete both of those planes. If you like that quick tip, be sure to hit the like button on this video, and now we're back to the point where the only thing in the tree is our base flange. So now let's get into creating that miter flange. So I'm going to pick on this edge here. I'm going to choose to create a new plane. So I'm going to go sketch, sketch, and now a new plane is created. And now I'm going to sketch the geometry for that miter flange. So I'm going to choose the line command. And I'm going to put this line right here exactly at that end point where that new plane was created. And then I'm going to move this line over and you'll notice that I can pick up on the sketch relationship of horizontal. So I'm going to pick up on that sketch relationship of horizontal. I'm going to hit escape. Then I'm going to use the smart dimension command and add a dimension here at 20 millimeters. And now I'm gonna to go to my sheet metal tools and I'm gonna choose the command miter flange. And miter flange works a lot like a sweep. What we're gonna do here with this miter flange is we're gonna take this sketch that we created and we're gonna sweep that sketch up this entire edge here. Sweep it up this edge here. And then we're gonna sweep it along this entire edge here as well. So we'll have a second flange here. And then we're gonna sweep it down this edge here as well. So we'll have a third flange here coming off of that edge as well. So keep that in mind because as soon as we click the miter flange command, here we go, miter flange, what we can do is we can go through here and we could pick this edge and we can pick this edge or we could use this icon that shows up here, which says just rip this thing around and connect it to any edges which are currently tangent to the first edge. So connect it to this edge here, to this edge here, to this edge here, and to this edge here. And the miter flange is gonna ignore these curved edges. It's not gonna sweep around the curved edges. So it just ignores them and it only selects these straight edges. So we choose that button, propagate, and look at that, that's a nice preview, I like that. So as far as the options for the miter flange go, the first option that you're gonna see is gonna be the option here for the flange position. So the flange could be bent entirely on the outside. It could be one material thickness out to the outside, or it could be flush to the existing edge. And that's the one that we're gonna do. We're gonna make this thing flush to the existing edge so that the total depth of our part is 100 millimeters. So from here to here is 100 millimeters. And if we, you know, if we were to make that flange extend beyond that, then we would be out of spec. That's gonna all be determined by what the customer is asking for. But the important thing to recognize is that you do have these three options here for flange position. 
The other option that you're going to see here is going to be gap distance. So if you press control one to switch to a front view again, you'll see here that the gap distance is this distance here on the miter flange. So if we go over here to gap distance and we set that to two millimeters and press enter, you get a much wider gap. If you set that to 0.2 millimeters, you get a much smaller gap. And if we set that to 0.5 millimeters, I think that's a reasonable gap. So again, that'll be specified by your customer or maybe by the manufacturing process. If you're planning on welding those corners together, there's probably gonna be a predefined gap for that weld. Finally, there's an option down here for start and offset. And basically what this option means is when we get here to the end of the miter flange, we want it to stop short. So here, if I said that I want that ending offset to be 10 millimeters, enter, you can see here now that the miter flange doesn't run all the way up and around, but instead it stops short. And then at that point, you would have to specify what the bend relief is for that region. And that could be the default, or you could put in a custom bend relief. But we're not going to use that option. We're just going to run this thing all the way out to the end of the model. And then we can hit the green check mark and boom, there is our miter flange. Now the miter flange doesn't just have to be a single line. We could get in here and we could say that we wanna edit that sketch and we could make the miter flange multiple lines. So it could be that original 20 millimeter line, then another line here, then another line in this direction. And then when we exit that sketch and we look at the results, we see we get a little bit more of an exotic miter flange there where we're creating almost like a coupling or a connector here to connect to another part, maybe for some type of venting. We could also include curve geometry in that sketch of the miter flange. So I could say I want to exit this sketch or edit this sketch here, get rid of that line, get rid of that line. So when they're straight like that, SolidWorks automatically bends the corners. But we could also get in here and manually create kind of a larger bend in that corner, maybe something like that. And then when we exit that sketch, you can see that now that miter geometry encompasses that curved geometry that we had in that original sketch it's just like a sweep it's just like we're sweeping up and around here so there's lots of cool stuff that you can do with the miter but just remember it doesn't have to be a single entity sometimes that can act as almost a hack if you're if your goal is just to create a single edge flange but you want that edge flange to be a little exotic what you could do is you could choose here at this edge and then you could choose the sketch sketch command so that creates a new plane normal to that curve at the end point. And then what you could do is you could create what is intended to be some type of an edge flange, but maybe it's an edge flange with multiple bends. So you're gonna create an edge flange that maybe looks something like this. So now what you can do is you can go into your sheet metal miter flange command, and you can create that quote unquote edge flange in a miter flange instead. So you could come here, you could say that you want that bend position to be bent outside. So bend outside for that bend position. And then we can hit the green check mark. So now instead of needing to do edge flange at 45 degrees, second edge flange, third edge flange, we could just kind of do that whole thing all in one single command by using the miter flange and like sweeping that multi-bend edge flange across that model. So the miter flange can really uh, save you some time if you start experimenting with it a little bit, kind of thinking about some other ways that it could be used. I'm gonna get rid of that complex miter flange on the rear of the part, and I'm also gonna edit this sketch and just turn this back into a single line so that we can talk about the final topic here, which is what's going on with the flat pattern of this miter flange. So if I go into the flat pattern here, you can see that there's something, obviously there's something wrong with this flat pattern. And this is a topic that we get into in our upcoming sheet metal training class. So if you or if any of your coworkers are trying to learn some sheet metal fundamentals, really get your sheet metal career started on the right foot, this is going to be a perfect class for you. We talk all about how to create sheet metal parts, how to put those parts into a 2D drawing, and how to create a one-to-one -one DXF export of your sheet metal flat pattern so you can move into the next phase of manufacturing. I'll include all the details down below, but this is a live training class with me. It's a across a web meeting so you can take it from anywhere but you can also ask me questions during the training and make sure that you don't get stuck you get training files you get a training manual you get a certificate of completion and like I said I'll include the information down below about that training class if you or if any of your co-workers are trying to learn solid work sheet metal this is absolutely the class for you and we're running it live next month so here you can see that in this flat pattern, we've got a problem. The problem is that if we look at this thing in the formed view, really what we would expect to see is almost a 90 degree notch here 
for what's going on in this corner. But when we look at this part in the flat pattern, that's not what we get. And if we sent this over to the manufacturing team, they would not cut the correct flat pattern if they used this one-to-one -one DXF export. Well, the problem here occurs in this feature over here in the tree. And this is something that we talk about a lot in that training class. The flat pattern feature needs to be edited. So when I right mouse button here on the flat pattern feature and I say edit feature, there's an option here for corner treatment. It says corner options, corner treatment. And basically what this means is that we're going to go in with a punch in the flat pattern and we're going to punch out those corners maybe with like a circular punch in the flat pattern. But that's not what I want to use. I want the flat pattern to look just like the formed pattern or the formed version of this model. So I'm going to uncheck that option for corner treatment. I'm going to hit the green check mark. And now when we go back into the flat pattern, we're happy to see that those corners look correct. So that's something that definitely catches people when they first start using the miter flange command. And hopefully this will help you avoid that pitfall. And if you enjoyed this video, this quick tip, be sure to hit the like button on this video. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you learned from this video. Let me know if you have any follow-up questions about this video. And of course, if you have a lot of follow-up questions, maybe consider signing up for that upcoming Too Tall Toby Sheet Metal Fundamentals training class. We're gonna be hosting it next month live and I'll include all the details down below. And I will look forward to seeing all of you in the next Too Tall Toby SolidWorks Sheet Metal quick tip video.